Takeovers.net with the one and only Loki. What's up, dog? Thank you, man. Glad to be here. Gather the Juggalos number 17. 17. Yeah. Some asshole outside with a megaphone, so. <laughs> Just keep that It's cool. Okay, first thing I want to ask uh, how does the mask represent your own uh, childhood or early life? Uh, I definitely watched a lot of horror movies growing up as a kid and shit, so you, um, you have that influence. And uh, in, in my teenage years, like, of course, fucking um, Hugh Strange you had the mask and shit, dog, no, definitely an influence of mine. And uh, other than Hugh that, Strange. man, I just, I just into masks. You know? I was collected masks when I was a kid, I was totally into it. So uh, it just made sense to have it as part of my um, demeanor and music. And when you have uh, people coming up to you, you know, telling you how much you impact their own lives through, through your music. How do you respond to that, man? I mean, that must be pretty hard. Uh, in, in person, um, people when <clears throat> people tell me that kind of shit, man, I just try to take a moment to, uh, like I said, have a moment to um, interact with them so they have a memory of, uh, you know, oh man, I met him, he was cool as hell with me, we connected for that one moment, and, uh, you know, he understood what I've been through. Maybe we had some similarities and shit like that. So, uh, anytime that I get approached with something like that, man, like I said, I just try to um, share that moment with the fans. Well, uh, and I'm sure it's kind of harsh on it. You probably get like long paragraphs, like, yeah, what the fuck yeah, is this? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, a lot of times they need advice and shit, too, man. Like, yeah, yeah. They'll be like, you know, I'm going through something, my girl left me, I'm depressed, whatever. Um, your music helps me, this or that. And, uh, if I have a, uh, anything to offer, man, I'll, I'll give my two cents and try to guide them in the right direction. Um, if only because maybe they'll listen, you know, more than somebody else in their life, you know. So. Yeah, yeah, you know, because they, they look up to you. Right, right. Exactly. Definitely, you got to give that a positive vibe, not like someone <clears throat> just say something random negative. And then, right, right. Because I could have a negative outcome, too, you know, yeah, you don't exactly, know. exactly, exactly, exactly. So uh, let's talk about the original concept for Jack Yo Beats, like back in the day. What, Way long time ago. What you? I mean, yeah. I mean, we're gonna talk about three here in right. a second, but that for real, fucking, man. I was a fucking kid, dog, when we did the first one. You know what I mean? That was fucking over ten years ago. You know? But uh, but what was the question? Well, my question is, what exactly inspired where you're like, I'm gonna do better than these guys on their own production? Honestly, Was that how it's set up? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think originally it started with uh, just fucking around, and then realizing like, wow, man, that's actually pretty cool, and fucking people liked it because it's something familiar. They know the the beats, the original beats, so they they already have that little connection, like oh, like it's familiar to them, but it's something new at the same time, so it worked out pretty cool. So, so yeah, Jackie Beach 3, man, uh, you did I'm So Nasty, which is a playoff of, uh, her name's Iggy. Iggy Azalea? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <coughs> so, are you a fan of that song? No, the actually, original? <laughs> no, not at all. I didn't, I didn't even know what the fuck it was. To be honest with you, my boy sent me a, uh, a voicemail, uh, which is actually the intro to the album. He sent me that on a voicemail, and he sang that little hook part, and I just realized the genius of it, you know what I mean? Like, so he actually, he kind of came up with that hook, and as soon as he did that, I fucking, um, we did the track, we knocked it out, and that became the opener for the album. Oh, wow, yeah, Yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, I never heard the original, the moment I found out who it was, I was like, okay, (laughs) well, but this is interesting. (laughs) Let's go behind the scenes uh, of the music video, man. We can cut to some behind the scenes right here. Bam. I'm a shitty rapper. Ah, I'm a shitty rapper. Ooh, ooh, uh, uh. Ooh. Ah, ooh, ooh. This mouth gutter like a pre-Jurassic alligator grilling Bitch, I don't bite lyrics, but I'm chopping on your jugular Right after strangulation, suffocation, and a bunch of drugs Uh, they call me General Mozilla, I starve shit What is happening right now? Oh, 
<laughs> what a drunk. Nice fucking sell, bro. <laughs> <laughs> My next question then is, uh, when is the next Oracle dropping? Uh, that's my next project, man. So. That's the third one. Cause yeah. you, Shadowland was the first one, yeah. and then the Book yeah. of Time is obviously the second. One. Correct. Yeah. So um, I don't know when it's gonna drop, man. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna be starting when I get home from the gathering. So I mean, <clears throat> Shadowland took four months. Uh, Book of Time took a year, man. A year plus. Um, so I don't intend to make to to. Uh, take that long to do the to do the third one but you know i'm gonna work on it until it's per, until it's perfect you know what i mean so right on but that's the next project that's coming out yes are you able to get into uh some of the <clears throat> subject matter or a style beats you're gonna drop uh it's gonna be heavier than it, it it'll be closer to shadowland it's definitely uh not as mellow as the book of time was uh, a lot more guitars and like shit like that for sure oh wow man and darker yeah Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, be when you were working on the original <coughs> articles, you know, was there anything that, from your own personal life, that may have thought of the idea, or was it more like a movie or a book or something? Um, could you elaborate on the question? Yeah, um, the, the oracles, like what exactly spawned the original idea uh, to call them oracles in the first place? It, it, it sounds stupid, but it, it, it all came to me in dreams and shit, man. No um, shit. The Shadowland album is all about uh, the dream state and uh, your subconscious and um, utilizing the different parts of your mind that aren't um, that you normally don't have access to when you're awake. And uh, if you listen to Shadowland, um, a lot of the material in that album is pertaining to... Um, I suffer from sleep paralysis. Um, which is, it's now becoming popular, they just did a documentary on it and shit, but I've had it since I was a kid. And um, a lot of the things I experienced went into um, the concepts for the album. And um, a lot of the album is through the eyes of what they call shadow people, which are it's something that people with sleep paralysis experience. Yeah, it's, it's some crazy shit. Uh, wow. You look it up, yeah. But uh, I believe you. <laughs> so that, that's, that was the concept for Shadow Light. Um, Book of Time was more... Um, in the same vein, but a little more mellow and um, getting into some other stuff. But yeah, man, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Wow, yeah, that's, that's deep, man. Thank you for the answer. Yeah, uh, wow, wow, definitely a new outlook on that. Oh uh, yeah. So another thing I wanted to ask is the Underground Propaganda Squad UPS. Was that? Did you do that type of project because you want to bring back the Mission Effect days from back in the day? No, no, absolutely not, man. Um, people, I knew people would always compare it, dude, because it's similar visual styles and shit. And, um, and you had a lot of people on board, obviously. Correct, yeah, but this is something completely different, man. Um, I think when we did MI, it was more about getting basically the dopest artists in the underground together, period. It didn't, it didn't really matter if they were close friends or crew or, you know, we, we didn't care about that. It was just, let's get the dopest people in the scene together and just make good music, you know what I mean? And that worked for a while. Uh, fortunately, a lot of egos and shit like that. Like I said, um, when you bring in people and it's more about the business aspect and the friendship and the bonds and shit, you're gonna have that. Um, and that's what happened with that, so. But UPS is more uh, crew-based. All the people that we fuck with now are, are homies and you know, people in our circles and shit. Yeah, so that's it's a lot more. Up. It's a lot more tight knit. So, did you reach <laughs> out to them all individually? Yeah, um, some of them, you know, um, like redneck soldiers. We fuck with them. Um, dirty, dirty, more or less brought them in. Uh, AXC, we fuck with. I fuck with them since 2003. You know what I mean? So we 
always kind of wanted to work on something, but it never really lined up till recently. And uh, I don't know, a lot of the people that you see are old school MI cats that are still around. Um, and just like I said, people. Yeah, man, you got uh, Saint Senna on board. You got yeah. Zero. You uh, got yeah. Dirty man. You got you guys killed it. So let, uh, let's yeah. talk about that performance, man. What for you? What stuck <coughs> out as the most? funnest moment being on stage at the gathering today uh honestly the funny like the dopest shit i seen was our boy shane he, he like climbed on the rail and just poured a half gallon bottle of whiskey in his eyes it's the most <laughs> like savage shit I've i seen think i did life. see that yeah i got doused <laughs> with a bunch of beers so. yeah the crowd, the crowd was definitely super live like they were liver than we were which is like it was crazy but uh fucking uh everybody it was good to see uh a lot of new faces come out and get love like that was cool for me like you know i always uh, I, I love the crowd here dog and the juggalos but i played here fucking what five or six times to these cats they never fucking experienced this dog so it's cool to see them see it for the first time and all yeah, the love and shit for real man so hell yeah i think you're i think when you go on that stage friday night it's gonna be fucking lit up dude <laughs> it's gonna be lit as fuck man <laughs> For real, for so, real. Did you uh, ask people to bring their masks? Or are we going to deck out Loki masks? Well, we'll sell them right now, man. Bring your fucking mask. Yeah, bring your fucking mask. Bring your fucking mask there, Johnny. <laughs> so, yeah, um, are you still working on the house three? Like, what, what's what's going on with uh, the house three? I'm just waiting, man. I, uh, I have a lot of shit written for it. and I already know the concept that I want to do. I just haven't had the little spark of, like... You know, you get a fucking artist, man, or weird. You know, sometimes we fucking you get a hair up your ass about something, dog, and you have to get it out. And that's like the best music that's gonna come out is when it just fucking flows right out of you. You know, um, and I haven't got that yet with that concept album, so I'm not gonna force it. But I already know the concept that I want to do, uh, and eventually, you know, we'll, we'll wrap that up for sure. Yeah, man, I'm hoping it'd be awesome if it could drop Halloween this year but i understand if it doesn't nah, it'll be it'll be a little bit man for that but it'll be worth it i promise yeah are you gonna do it it's gonna be like uh then because the house one and house two you know there's like five songs so it's gonna be like yeah that short yeah. that style yeah it'll be short for real um actually the, the third one the original version that i was working on had more than five tracks but i might just try to keep it slimmed down you know yeah, for, right on, for consistency right sake <laughs> So what's it like working with Cross from? Because none of you guys get to work with each other. Uh, Cross is cool, man. He's one of the. He's. How we said, man, in, in our scene, he's one of the uh, masterminds. You know, uh, Mars is another one. Um, you know, fucking cats that can do multiple things. Multiple, yeah, like from all aspects, from the business <laughs> end to fucking. There's a. There's very few people that can facilitate all of these different arms of um, the creative world dude that we that we fucking in our little scene anyway uh crossworm's definitely fucking super talented as far as production and you know his mixing is just his regular music which is fucking really creative uh, yeah it's it's definitely something that and it's, uh, and it's, physical, uh, it's fresh it keeps it fresh yeah yeah, yeah. so uh and he's a cool dude you know i've known the dude for a long time so Cross one definitely good people. Yeah, yeah, man. You guys worked on Bleed together. Yeah. And yeah. that was he, uh, he helped a lot with the book of time, man. In production and shit like that. So yeah, um another question I wanted to ask was uh the Halloween holiday. How how do you celebrate that? I know Halloween's we usually far yeah, off. we usually do a show like it. It's just like a rapper, horror, horror rapper thing. <laughs> Usually I always get booked on some kind of Halloween fucking show. We're doing one this year in uh, Colorado. Playboy the Beast. Yeah, Playboy. They're trying to get Gruesome out too. Oh, and, shit. Uh, and Nick Nasty and... Um, there we go. Let's talk about the old horror. Yeah, I'm that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. So, um... Yeah, that's usually how I celebrate Halloween, dude. If I'm not doing a show, we usually have some kind of party or something like that. But I don't have kids, so... I don't do the trick or treat thing anymore, but fucking uh, yeah, we usually just part. Usually I'm at a show, dude. To be honest with you, and if it's not our show, it's usually you know how wicked or you know we'll travel out to see something. So, so okay, uh, I got a couple more questions left. But this one I want to ask: if you could work with any artist, dead or alive, right now, right who now, would it be? 
Uh, I'm gonna say Dope D O D. And why is that? Uh, just in 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 our, I don't see them in our in our little scene, but I see it as the same kind of style. And, yeah. yeah. Uh, I just I really respect what they do. It's one of the few rap, uh, like rap acts that I still that I bump. You know what I mean? Of new shit coming out. So super dope, super dope. That's that's who I pick for sure. And then how are things different now? Uh, back in the old horrorcore.com days versus the internet, you know, back then, you know, it was more uh, the social media thing was not. So, what's right. different between now uh, or back then than now? Or what do you like better out of the two? <laughs> I think now, man, uh, I think talented artists have a lot more uh, uh, access to um, the tools they need to create music and become successful. At the same time, the fact that everybody has these tools, it makes it harder because there's uh, there's more competition. Everybody's doing, you know, for whatever you do, there's a hundred other people doing it, which yeah, right. makes it immediately hard to stand out and do your thing. Oversaturated market. Correct. So, uh, I mean, it's, um, for somebody like me, uh, we got a lot of our original fans through ground promo. And I always have that, you know what I mean? I always have that mentality of, you know, we can do the online thing, but, you know, we used to follow the tours, man, and and go and do street promo, you know what I mean? Like, like heavy. Um, but the online thing definitely, man, has made it possible to reach, like, we ship stuff to places like that I've never even heard of. That's, <laughs> not, that's like, blows my mind, you know what I mean? So, Definitely, uh, man. You probably get like orders from like Russia and right, Germany and shit. Right. So obviously, like the internet makes a lot of different things possible as far as reaching uh, different demographics and different countries and shit that you normally wouldn't be able to. So I love that, man. I love it. And I we it's it's a known fact that your black velvet is your favorite drink. So can you name off one of the Craziest stories you ever had in on Black Velvet. Uh, if you want to talk, you don't want to, don't want to talk about it. It's totally cool. Craziest story on Black Velvet. Hmm. <laughs> That's good. That's good. That's good. Uh, man, too many, man. I can't. <laughs> it's just, every time, man. Every time there's a story. Um, fucking. I don't know, man. I can't think of nothing else on my head, bro. <laughs> Usually I don't remember. That's the problem, I guess. You know. But uh, and yeah. What do you like? The other night, man. We were like, uh, I don't know. We had a golf cart, and it was. I don't want to get myself in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. But let's Black leave it at that. Black belt and golf carts. <laughs> leave that to your imagination. Those you're watching on Pickleovers.net. So yeah, uh, what I want to get into for the final question. Uh, the next. Uh, Five ten years. What do you want to accomplish, man? I know um, that's that's a long ways away, but what do you got your mind set um, on? We're finally getting out on the road, man. I want to establish myself as uh, you know a touring artist. I think that's something that's lacked up until now because for various reasons, whether it was resources weren't available or just you know poorly managing money and shit like that, whatever. So I think now, man, we're <laughs> we're right at the point where. Um, you know, we're about to be out on the road and doing this shit and reaching a lot of new people. And uh, <clears throat> in, honestly, in five to ten years, uh, my goal will be to be traveling the world, you know, not just the United States, but, you know, reaching all those places that we were talking about earlier, you know, and getting out there and interacting with the people. Yeah, because you, you were talking about just fucking going on an RV and living in an RV and traveling around everywhere. Yeah, exactly. And that's awesome. Exactly. Well, I, I've always been like that, man. Uh, I'm a traveler. That's like just my mentality, you know what I mean? I've always, I've lived in probably 10 states, man, in the past fucking 10 years. Like, oh, wow. We move around a lot. So it's naturally for me to do that. And uh, uh, if I could make a, uh, find a way to, enter, to do it with my music, uh, it would be fucking awesome, you know? Yeah, because I know, I know you're relatively based, or were based in Florida. Right, but right. yeah. But I'm from PA originally, so I say we bounce, we bounce all around, man. So, but uh, yeah, hopefully, man, in the next few years, man, we'll have we'll become mobile. You know what I mean? And got out to all these different fucking places and and seen seen what they have to offer. You know, 
Okay, and as the final bonus question, top three horrorcore releases of all time that have influenced you. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. I have a weird. I have a weird. Uh, I have a weird definition of horrorcore. To me, it's more uh, the scene. Yeah, the scene is so. You know I mean? So. Um, I know there's like horrorcore, like um, what is it like? Um, Purists, I guess you yeah, could yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, they just make stab up music. I know what you mean. But then there's people that are right. going all touch on, like you and Gruesome and Plague with the Beast don't just do that type of music. You guys do right. part so, of it. So uh, I mean, what what I consider horrorcore, you know, most people probably wouldn't. But as far as influential albums that have influenced me to do horrorcore, would be Riddlebox, Twisted, Most Tasteless, and. Which isn't a super horrorcore CD, but I mean it's on there. And uh, Q Strange Creation Execution. Oh yeah, there sure. you go. That sure. yes, definitely. If we're talking about influence, yes. Yeah, yeah wow. Great. Yep, hell yeah. So FagoLovers.net with the one and only Loki, and he does not do interviews much, so we we got this online. Hell yeah. Thank you. My bro. pleasure, brother. Thank you, man.